she would try to contact me via family. New numbers. She sent her unit to attempt to contact me. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Ara Zone Stories. Today we have a story where this woman did a terrible mistake, but now she's trying to communicate with her boyfriend but she failed. Let's see how this story ended. I come from a military family. That being said my life was a bit different with me being the man of the house whenever dad was away. I have a little brother with autism, a baby brother and an older sister who's legally blind. We didn't always live in the nicest areas, so I made it a point to do whatever I could to take care of them. With that being said I had additional responsibilities that didn't give me much time for friends. Perfect equation to end up being awkward and quiet. Five years ago I enlisted into the Army National Guard. I wanted active duty, but wanted to go to college prior to being active, so it seemed to be a good fit. I completed my training when I was 18 and went back to my home state. While in school, I met a kind and gentle woman who, we clicked well and after a few dates over three months started to date officially, the first relationship I had. She enlisted not too long after and we became dual military couple. For a while things were fine. Physical life was active. We'd go on date nights often and our families were in good standing. A few months later, we were at Thanksgiving dinner with my family when the topic went towards music and artists, a topic I personally have no knowledge of. Personally, I only use music while working out and never paid attention to it, simply used for background noise. She would talk about her love for political poetry and African-American artists. When I was asked for my thoughts, I just kept it blunt, I don't really care, I'm not political and can care less. I just like music that sounds decent while I lift. I want to get hyped, not listen to someone's views mid-set. Admittedly, I can see where this could come off wrong. But it's just who I am, I'm direct, awkward, and never cared for politics in any form. Apparently this wasn't the answer she was looking for. I found this out when she slapped the crap out of me in front of my family. With a look of shock on everyone, as she continues her rant on how insensitive I am to other groups, and how I'm close-minded. Not wanted to deal with any of the lie that would surely ensue after I just got up, and announced that I think it's time for her to go home. To drive home to drop her off was awkward. She tried to pretend like nothing happened, while I'm over here trying to process how embarrassed the whole situation was. I thought about leaving at that point, but thought maybe it would get better. Spoiler alert, it got worse. No longer sweet and caring she went to more demanding and spoiled. She started demanding bedroom activity almost every time we met. Wanted more expensive dates. Prior we would go to parks, hike or watch movies. Now she wanted six flags and upper end restaurants. Whenever I said no, she would throw a fit or try to cause a fight. This went on for a while before I got tired of it and attempted to break it off. Seeing how she got physical over music preferences, I thought it to be better to leave over a phone call. Started it off direct and just said I was leaving. This is when she drops a bomb. I had a missed termination in November, I'm sorry that's why I've been different. What do you mean you had a missed termination? We always use the protection. I had clumps in my period, and it looked like a missed termination. I'm sorry, but that doesn't change much. Instead of communicating you decide to hide it and treat me like trash. But anon we had a baby. I'm just throwing it out there right now, I'm stupid. I was 18, and had no clue how any of this works. While now I feel guilty and broke, I stayed with her. For the sake of length I won't do a play-by-play, -play, but here's a few examples of things that followed. Always wanted to monitor my accounts, got more physically and emotionally abusive, used the missed termination as a poker chip, demanded bedroom activity, once ignoring me saying no in a movie theater, and going through with it anyways. If caught I would lose my military career, if I made a scene I would more than likely still lose my career berated me whenever I didn't agree with politics, tried to make me isolate from the very few friends. I had always wanted to try unprotected bedroom activity, tries to get people around us to see me as a bad guy. Anytime we used plan B, she would complain about ending her baby etc. Few months later we both get orders, she gets 6 months orders and I get 3 month orders. The timeline is that I leave 1 week prior to her coming home, so we will not be seeing each other of 9 month, this will be important later. While she's on orders, I hang out with friends and they try to help rebuild what she tore down, trying to build me up to leave her. Being stupid and 18 I was hesitant to leave the first relationship. They called me stupid, but said they'd always have my back no matter that happens. I ship out, she comes back. 
We have zero contact for the three months I'm out. I meet a lot of great people, one being someone who I would consider a brother in the future. We will call him Felix. After the orders, I get back home and head over go the GF apartment. And met an utter bombshell. Hey welcome back. We're pregnant. I'm four months pregnant. What? At this point I'm not thinking clearly. All I'm thinking about is how I'm going to support a family at 19. And how much money I wasted on protections and plan B if the things didn't work. On the way back from her place, I picked up my first can of dip, cigs while calling Felix. I explained the situation through barely coherent ramblings. God bless his heart, he was patient enough to let me finish when he broke the news. Look Anon I know you're in shock. I know you're not this stupid. You were on orders for how long? And how long was she on orders? How long did you two not have contact? She's four months along right? No contact for nine months right? Take a step back, calm down and think. Hangs up. I'm now in my car embarrassed as can be that I didn't think about the timeline until Felix mentioned it. I call her the next morning confirming dates before I break the news to her. You're four months pregnant when we've been on opposite parts of the country for nine months. Now either my stuff is super stuff that shot 2,000 miles to you. That baby is Jesus too or simply that's not my baby. Over a year of mistreat caught up with me. I no longer cared about trying to please her or messing up. I just did not care. She tried convincing me that it could be my kid, leading into a long convo best summed in not my problem. I break up with her and made it clear I wanted to be left alone. Fast forward a few days and I get a message from her parents, Anon we understand how you feel, but this is your responsibility, and we need you at the next appointment to get tested for the sickle cell trait. I was going to ignore it until my family brought up that it might be possible for them to go to my unit, or take me to court if I didn't have proof that it wasn't mine. So I ended up going under the agreement that I will only get tested if the ultrasound puts the date within a realistic time frame. I get there, they do their thing, I wait for the doctor to come back. Doctor, so I understand you're the dad. Me. Well that depends, how far along is she? Doctor. Four and half months, me. I just got back from three month orders, and she got back from six months, we didn't have contact for nine months. Things get awkward, doctor can't look me in the eye. I ask if it's humanly possible, she answers no, so that's that. Not my kid, I think it's all over. I was wrong. For the next few months, she would try to contact me via family, new numbers, fake socials, she sent her unit to attempt to contact me. I had on two occasions her friends or family try to enter the property. At this point, it got so bad, I was just done. I lost my first relationship, I lost the few friends I had. My performance at work has dropped so low, I was views as a joke. I stopped working out and was stressed so bad. I went from 140 pound to 120 pound since I got home. I was just ready for everything to be over. I had the barrel of my hunting rifle in my mouth just ready to end. My phone lights up making me want to pull the trigger more out of fear of it being the ex or her family. Then I noticed the ringtone. It was the you say run from my hero academia. Felix ringtone. I pick up the call. Hey Anon I'm just calling to check in on you, how you doing? You feeling alright? I broke down. First time in my life where I actually broke down crying. I tell him everything. What was going through my head, what I was about to do, everything that happened since our last phone call in the car. We had a 3 hour phone call about how to handle the situation, and where I can get help. The next day I was in a therapist's office breaking down again getting help, that admittedly I probably needed over the years. I got a restraining order, took her to court, and she openly admitted to the harassment, and the fact the child wasn't mine. Court decided to not grant the order to not hurt her military career, but gave her a warning that if she does anything, I will be granted one. With that being said I move my back to a different state to stay on the safe side. Fast forward a few years, I completed college and decided to stay National Guard. I now work in the cyber field, married an amazing woman who I'd loving, supportive and wants to grow and improve as a team. Felix would later end it himself November 3, 2021, something I personally feel guilt for on a daily basis. Last I checked X was still crazy, stalking my life when she can. I want to share a few things. 1. If your gut and people who you hold close tell you to run, run. 2. Take care of the people around you. It only takes what seems like a minor mistake to cost you something that meant the world. 3. Something Felix told me. A soldier isn't just a title, it's a symbol of someone who endures and embraces hardship and pain, 
and continues to move forward to care for the people around them made me realize that if I pulled that trigger, I would have left my siblings, the flesh and blood that I raised alone without their older brother having their back. Thank to him I was able to reach out and help whole communities that I used to live in bettering the lives of the people in them. I'm visiting his grave and family face to face with my wife in the spring. I want them to know what their son's and brother's actions led to, and in return what effect that had not only on my life, but the communities I've reached out to. Their son died a hero to many, I want them to know that at the least. And glad things have worked out for him. Yeah his ex is crazy and lacks every bit of intellectual traits out there it's insane. There was nothing he could do for Felix. I have known this girl for 4 years through social media. We started dating 7 months ago, but she put off meeting me until last weekend. She routinely came up with excuses or that she was too busy and something came up. She has a 7-year-old son, so I tried to be understanding of that, and we kept it long distance until she was free, though we were abundantly clear that it was a committed relationship. We texted all day, called every night. During this time of dating, before meeting, I discovered that she has been hospitalized in the past for self-harm and placed in the psych ward. She has a diagnosis for borderline personality disorder. Her previous relationship ended badly because she began screaming at the guy so much so that he began to also self-harm and had to be hospitalized as well. Now, fast forward to this previous weekend when I finally met her. We spend the weekend together, everything goes pretty well, we're clicking decently, and I ask her how she feels towards being in person, and if I look like my pictures, because I know meeting in person can be jarring. She comes across as very thrilled, happy, she's constantly touching me, cuddling me, laying her head on me, laughing and smiling, holding my hand during a trip to the store. Everything is great for the most part aside from some general anxiety and weird awkward moments. We have bedroom activity multiple times, and she was enthusiastic about it, even though that she didn't directly initiate it because of trauma from a previous relationship that she made clear to me. She always wants me to initiate it. The final night we spend together, she receives a phone call while in bed laying next to me. It's a friend of hers, a guy, who demands to know where she's at, who she's with. She says, now isn't a good time. I'm with someone. I'll talk to you later. The guy doesn't stop and begins getting progressively more upset, asking my name, how long she's known me, and wanting her best friend's number so that he can text her. The call goes on for 10 minutes, and eventually after her saying that she's on a date, they end the call with him saying that he wants to talk later in private. I ask her many details about why she feels the need to answer to him, and why was he so flirtatious. She brushes it off as him being friendly, and that they've known each other for a while. We have a pretty heated argument that lasts two hours. I stay calm, but she tries to brush it aside by saying that she knows how it looks, but it's not the case. We go to bed, and I walk her to my front door the next morning. She tries to hug me, and I tell her that I'll talk to her later. She turns back, and tells me that she loves me as she's walking down the steps. She later texts me that day, going off on me, saying that I don't look like my pictures, that I edit them so heavily that she didn't even recognize me in person, and that I'm not going to find anyone if I'm not genuine with them. So I explained to her that I've sent her videos on Snapchat of my face for months, not to mention all of my pictures on Facebook and Instagram. She clearly knew what I looked like, Snapchat filters or not. I've told her that I gained some weight during the pandemic and wasn't as muscular as I used to be, even a slight receding hairline. But she knew that before coming and told me that she doesn't care. Regardless, she says to me, I know I caused a fair amount of damage with that phone call, but you need to understand what you did also wasn't okay. You didn't even hold me while I was crying, and you were mad at me rather than the situation. You've broken my trust and I can't look past it. So now, we've broken up and removed each other. I've tried to call her and ask her to talk about it at least over the phone, but she refuses. I asked her if she felt this way, then why not say so in person because we could have had a better goodbye. She said, I can't think clearly when I'm in front of you. I didn't even realize that I felt this way until I left. I love you so much, but sometimes that's not enough. She then admits to me that after thinking about it, that I'm right, and that her friend probably does have feelings for her. She said all of her guy friends end up falling for her. I can't help but feel like she's deflecting the blame of that phone call onto me for something wild and out of nowhere. 
if she was displeased, then why stay the entire weekend, have bedroom activity with me, and pretend to be happy, literally telling me how happy you are and how great everything is. She told me that she seethed with anger on the way home with how I got upset over the phone call. She said I had a right to be slightly mad about it, but not act like it was the end of the world. She is not his girlfriend if he just met face to face recently. The other guy is her boyfriend and he is the affair partner. She avoids a discussion with her real boyfriend because she is guilty of cheating and trying to come up with reasons he will believe that she is loyal to him. She shifts the blame onto him because she is now trying to make up with her real boyfriend. She didn't break up for no reason. Her reason is her real boyfriend caught her cheating with him and he haven't figured that out yet.